Hey, I have nothing to do. What's up? It's a Gojo Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And um, today I'm going to be doing my second review of the day. And you don't know where my first review is because it's in Cantonese. It's my Cantonese channel. Check that one out. So today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new no name album, Sundial. This album has been under my radar for quite some time now. I've been planning to review this now. And uh, goddamn, is the album cover scary? like it looks like a picasso painting in real life it's very uncanny and i know no name is trying to i guess comment on beauty standards but god damn what the fuck is this cover um <laughs> so there is that. so chicago jazz rapper no name is back with a new album Previously, she has released Telephone, which is really good, and in 2018, she released Room 25. I reviewed that album not too long after its release, and I thought it was really good as well. It has a lot of room for improvement, but overall, it's jazzy, snarky, and has a lot of really thoughtful socio-political messaging. And now we have a new album, and um, it's interesting. Now... I thought the album's pretty good. Instrumentally, the beats, the production, they're all really nice. Um, but I went to Rate Your Music to find out that a lot of people are rating it so low because of a certain verse from a certain rapper on the third track, which I will get to later. But the first two tracks of this album are fantastic. We have Black Mirror, which is a cool, jazzy opening track. We have some really nice smooth flutes, some soft vocal harmonies, and some slick rhyme schemes that are very funny, clever, witty. And then the second track, Hold Me Down, is even better. It is an endearing gospel rap track with some cutesy vocal lines, some light drums. Lyrically, she calls out capitalism, climbing the hierarchy. So not too bad, nothing offensive, really good. Now we have the third track where we have the elephant in the room. The reason why everyone's giving this album um, four stars, uh, four out of ten, five out of tens, and that's because of Jay Electronica's verse. Uh, so this track features rapper Jay Electronica, who has been for some time now very anti-Semitic, and on this verse, he even calls uh, the Ukraine-Russian war a hoax and Zelensky a joke, which is very stupid. He's just one of those people who thinks that all of American media are like kind of fake. Oh. All of American media are kind of fake and whatever, the, the, the wildfire in Hawaii must be a hoax and the war must be a hoax and this is a hoax that is a hoax without any sense of critical thinking or literally go outside of American media, the whole world is also reporting on this. So kind of cringe kind of bad and kind of weird that No Name is including J Electronica on this track. And obviously a lot of fans were upset. And instead of apologizing, No Name didn't apologize. He made it very clear that it's not her fault. She's not anti-Semitic. She's only including J Electronica because, because, you know. And uh, she even defended herself again and again on Twitter. Uh, and every single tweet she tweets uh, becomes more and more salty, more and more defensive, and it just becomes a, a, a sort of a black stain in this album, I guess. So um, yeah, not very cool. Instrumentally, it's fine. It's kind of a spacey track, but this verse in particular sort of made this track very infamous, very putrid, and definitely an awful look on No Name's part. And worse for J Electronica, even though it's already really bad. Following that, we have Boom Boom, which is, I guess, a satire for over-sexualized hip-hop, you know, a la wet-ass pussy. Um, and we have lyrics like, kissing a poom poom, pussy tastes like a food food, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cringy, whether it is satirical or not, maybe that's the point, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the point, so I'm not that mad about it. I don't think it's terrible but it definitely uh, has a degree of cringe in it. Instrumentally, it is fun and jazzy. The feature is not bad. I like the kick drum beat. So not a bad track, just kind of, um, kind of off the mark, I would say. 
Following that, we have potentially the interlude, which is potentially an interlude. Instrumentally, it's very loose, very lukewarm, and it's two minutes long, so it's not that different in terms of duration with other tracks on the album. But then instrumentally, it's very simple, so it it's not an interlude, maybe an interlude. And this track is about self-potential, you know, maybe you're good at this, maybe you're not. And so using that to be a metaphor for the track to be an interlude is actually a really clever concept. And then after that, we have the track Namesake and instrumentally, this is a highlight on the album for me. I love the tight drums, the groovy bass, the whole thing is just full of energy. And this track lyrically is about her not messing with big names because these big names like Beyonce and Kendrick are distractions for bigger problems. Um, and also her performing at Coachella, even though she had, I guess, ideological differences with Coachella and how it's being run. Um, yeah, no, kind of a weird call out, especially to Beyonce and Kendrick, because especially Kendrick Lamar, who sure is a very big name and, uh, you know, cashes out from time to time, but he's still as solid as it comes. He still addresses sociopolitical issues as well as personal issues without being distracting or anything. So no name calling them out while to a degree, no name is saying something, there's a fly here, but to another degree, it just feels like friendly fire and unneeded, I guess, toxicity. Then we have Beauty Supply, which is of course about beauty standards in America. It is a mid-paced track with some light keyboards and shots of harmonies, really nice guitars, not a bad track at all. Then following that we have Toxic, which is a track about toxicity, toxic relationship. And on this track lyrically, she sounds so bitter and cynical. It really makes you think that there's probably another side to the story. Afrofuturism is not a bad track, but kind of brief. Instrumentally, it has some simple keyboards and drum beats, and it's very muffled and quiet. So, um, that's that. Instrumentally, not very great. But the album does end off pretty solidly. We have gospel question mark, where we have some beautiful gospel vocals. Billy Woods completely murders his verse. Amazing. The chord progression is sweet and comforting, easily one of the highlights. And the album ends off with Oblivion, which has a pretty solid feature from common, groovy bass, zany performances, some smooth vocal features from Ioni, and overall it's a really solid ending. So yeah, I'm kind of torn with this album. I think conceptually there are a lot of very questionable moments here and there, um, but instrumentally I think it's really well produced. I think there are some really clever moments. It's just kind of a torn album, like you don't really know why some of the decisions are made when making this album. So uh, yeah, I guess just by music alone, I'm giving this album like a strong six to a light seven out of 10. So have you listened to No Name's new album? Comments below, let me know, subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.